This is Bucatini alla Matriciana, a classic, amazing recipe from Rome. A pasta that you will love. And if you already know about this, you already love it. Today I'm gonna show you how to make it with my twist. It is authentic, but I do add an ingredient that I believe you must use for a matriciana. Look at all these ingredients. Smooth, juicy. Oh, bellissima matriciana, bellissima. Mmm, mm. mm, yum! Ladies and gentlemen, I spent a week in Rome learning all the best tricks about Roman pastas. And today I made you a beautiful amatriciana with my extra touch. Yes, it's an authentic with an extra touch that I don't know if Romans will like it. Let's learn more about this dish that I really love. To make bucatini alla matriciana, like a real Roman, we need bucatini. A pasta I don't really like, but for a matriciana, you must use this. And I love it with a matriciana. Why? Because bucatini is like a thick round spaghetti and it's got the hole in the middle. The sauce goes in and absorbs the sauce. Plus the sauce on the outside, this pasta is gonna become full of flavors, nice, moist, buonissimo. We're gonna use 300 grams of bucatini. So basically I'm cooking this for three people, 100 grams per person. Why am I only using 100 grams per person? Because we're also gonna use two small cans of peeled tomatoes looking at 800 grams of peeled tomatoes. Yes, it's a lot, but I do want a lot of sauce. I also want to add cherry tomatoes, 250 grams of cherry tomatoes. Romans don't do it. This is something I want to add to this dish because I do like the fresh cherry tomatoes in it, okay? You don't have to use it. This is my touch to this dish. Guanciale, which is the pig chick, okay? I'm using 200 grams of guanciale. So basically, I've got 300 grams of pasta, 200 grams of guanciale. I've already removed the skin. You don't wanna eat the skin with the guanciale. And now we're gonna cut this into strips. Pecorino Romano, grated pecorino Romano, as much as you like. And of course, black pepper. You wanna use extra virgin olive oil? Go for it. But the guanciale will make so much oil that you don't need extra virgin olive oil. All right, the first thing we want to do, here's the guanciale. No skin, we want to cut the 200 grams of guanciale first into slices. Make sure you get a nice sharp knife. Here I'm using a Victorinox knife, nice and sharp. This gives me what I need. Look at that. Look how easy it is to cut it. All right, guys, as you can see here, we have meat, fat, flavors on top. So this is what we're going to do now, okay? We're going to cut into strips, just like that because we want the meat in the middle, fat and fat. Fat will melt and becomes oil, the meat becomes crunchy, also the fat will become crunchy. So this is what we want to achieve. Now we're gonna cut the cherry tomatoes in half or into four pieces. See, for the cherry tomatoes, I'm gonna use a Victorinox Tomato knife, so much easier, see? Perfect. I cut them enough just because it's easier and faster. Now the reason why I use cherry tomatoes is because I do like that beautiful touch of freshness in it, you know? Because the peeled tomatoes are beautiful. You could do this just with cherry tomatoes, to be honest. You don't need peeled tomatoes. You just need to use more, a lot more cherry tomatoes. Okay, here we go. Now we're gently going to crush these peeled tomatoes, okay? Gently. Guys, now here we have beautiful peeled tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes, which is something I added, Romans don't do. But you tell me, Romans, how I'm not gonna use basil? We need basil here. The smell of basil with the tomatoes. Why you don't put basil in the matriciana? Now, because the authentic recipe doesn't have basil, I cannot use basil. But I do want to use basil. Look how beautiful it is. Guanciale in my hand. Guanciale is the pig chick. Let's go in. Look at that. Go in, put the guanciale everywhere. We wanna cook the guanciale on a medium low heat. If you use pancetta, it's the same, okay? Medium low. You wanna be gentle when you cook the guanciale. 
You want to add more guanciale? Okay, you can do it. Okay, I'm using less because I want to have a good balance here, okay? Of guanciale, of uh, cherry tomatoes, two tomatoes. For me, it's so important for you to slice the guanciale like this. So that way, you have a very nice experience. I see people cutting guanciale into cubes. Yes, that's okay, but you're not gonna get the meat and the fat and the fat again on the same slice. So the experience will be a little bit different. A couple of minutes and you will see the fat turning into oil. Keep an eye on this, watch. Now uh, guys, look how much oil we have from the guanciale. Look, this is all fat. This is also full of flavors, okay? Don't forget, full of flavors. Now we want to keep cooking the guanciale a little bit longer. Let's make sure we turn the guanciale crispy, okay? It's very important. But can you see the meat is there? The fat is crispy here. Can you see how important it is to have the meat in the middle and the fat on both sides? Small details can make a big difference. All right, it's time for us to add the cherry tomatoes. Why? Because every single piece of guanciale is crispy and it's being cooked. It took me just under five minutes to get to this point. Now, cherry tomatoes. Here we go. Beautiful cherry tomatoes. Quickly stir. Now we're gonna have the guanciale making love with the cherry tomatoes. We have a very low heat, okay? If you have this on a high heat, it's not gonna be pleasant. On a low heat, in less than five minutes, the cherry tomatoes will be ready. And then we can add the peeled tomatoes puree. See the oil becoming red? The flavors here are so important. How beautiful the colors are. Look at the color of the oil. To be honest, for me, I can just put the pasta in the way it is, just now. It's gonna be full of flavors. But now, we also need to put the peeled tomatoes. Look how wonderful, look at this. Look at the colors here. The guanciale is still nice and crunchy. Look at that. All these beautiful flavors in here. Look how nice and soft the cherry tomatoes are, releasing all these beautiful juice. And now it's time to add the peeled tomatoes. We're gonna add more flavors to this beautiful dish. Okay, look how beautiful. Now all these ingredients can make love together. Now you got two options. You can remove the guanciale before you add the tomatoes, so you can keep it nice and crispy. But I like to have the guanciale in there, making love with the cherry tomatoes, with the peeled tomatoes. I like it bello. Look how wonderful, look how beautiful. Now do we need basil? Mm, probably. Do we need some salt? You can put just a pinch, but you know how much flavors and how much saltiness you get from the guanciale and from the oil of the guanciale. We can put the flame up now and we can do, we can cook this for about 20 minutes, no more, until the sauce gets a little bit reduced, but not too much. Now, do you understand the flavors that you get from the guanciale, from the oil from the guanciale, giving flavors to the tomato sauce, to the cherry tomatoes? They're making love together. It's just beautiful. Yes, you need the basil in my opinion, but I think you don't need the basil at the same time because the flavors are already in there. Do you need the salt? No, because you've got the pecorino coming soon. The guanciale, which is salty. But I'm gonna add a little bit of sea salt, just in case. In about 10, 15 minutes, we're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, before we boil the pasta, we need to make sure the water is boiling in a large pot. We put one tablespoon of sea salt or rock salt. Now, this is a good artisan bucatini pasta and it takes 11 minutes to cook. So, you wanna boil them for 11 minutes or whatever it says on the packet. Push the bucatini inside. You wanna help the bucatini to go in the water. Gently, don't push too much. Don't leave it there. This is crucial. You want all the bucatini to make sure that they cook evenly. All right, see you in 11 minutes. How do we know when the sauce is ready? I'll show you, come and have a look, look. You do this, can you see? Spartiacque, look. Huh? See the sauce? 
It's not runny anymore, it's nice and thick. This is perfect for our bucatini. So let's go and get the bucatini so they can make love with the sauce. All right, let's see if the bucatino is pronto. It's been 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. One more minute and it's ready to make love with the sauce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guys, the bucatini are ready. What a belly. Nice and silky. They are ready to go in the sauce. Bellissimi. Al dente. Perfetti. Okay, guys, the pasta is ready and the sauce is ready too. Mm -hmm, it is ready. Now, a good Roman pasta needs pepper. So let's go with the pepper. Let's go crazy with the pepper. Now, don't call me crazy, but we do need some pecorino here. Here we go. Before we put the pasta, let's mix all the ingredients. Bellissimo. Let's get a mug of pasta water. Maybe we need it, maybe we don't. Now let's put the pasta in the pan. Let's mix the sauce and the pasta. Now guys, time to toss, okay? Time to toss. Oh, bellissimo. We don't need any pasta water. Look at that. Look at this. Una spolveratina di pecorino. Bellissimo. Look! Ah! Cremosa! Smooth! Juicy! Full of flavors. Look at all these ingredients. Got the guanciale, the sauce, smooth, juicy. Oh, bellissima matriciana, bellissima. Guys, there's one thing left to do. Here I'm using a tweezers, I just wanna be fancy. Mm -hmm. Now, what we do here, we get the bugatini, and just like a fork. Now I'm gonna add them in the plate in a fancy, fancy way. Here we go. And now you know what we do? We put all the ingredients on top. Everything goes on top. Look at that. Look at the cherry tomatoes and guanciale. Cherry tomatoes and guanciale. Look at all these beautiful ingredients. Una spolveratina di pecorino romano. A little bit of black pepper because every Roman pasta lacks black pepper. And here we go. We're ready to serve the bucatini alla matriciana, ladies and gentlemen. Eccoli qua. Bucatini alla matriciana. Done my way. this pasta look again look look smooth beautiful sauce the sauce is everywhere the sauce is inside the pasta outside the pasta got enough guanciale everywhere guarda che bello guarda beautiful bellissimo 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 well i think it's time to eat it mm. Mm. what i love about bucatini with a matriciana, because I don't really love this pasta, is that when I eat it, it works like a straw. You eat the bucatini, and because you suck the head in, you have the straw, like the hole inside the bucatini, you're sucking the sauce inside, and it's like, wow, <laughs> the sauce, it's beautiful. It's like drinking the sauce while eating the pasta. It's just a great combination, beautiful pasta. Beautiful guanciale. I think the cherry tomato is something you do need to use. Why not? It's just beautiful. It goes so well with the amatriciana. 
and gives you the extra texture. The guanciale is not crispy, but that was my choice. I wanted the guanciale to make love with the sauce. A little bit crispy. It's my choice. If you want the guanciale to be crispy, you remove the guanciale, you cook the sauce, and then you add the guanciale right at the end. But to be honest, the guanciale here <laughs> needs a flavor from the sauce and they need to spend time together. Oh yeah, they do. Guys, from this wonderful place, what can I say? Let me know if you like the addition of cherry tomatoes. Write a comment below. I will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate video recipe. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's Plate.